Hello guys, so now in this video, um, they did a press conference, okay, um, the CEO of EG7, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Hello and welcome to this presentation about our latest acquisition at EG7. I'm super proud to be able to announce that we have acquired Daybreak. Today we're going to talk about EG7 very shortly because I think most investors already know us. Then I'm going to explain a little bit more about Daybreak, what kind of company it is, its history. And then we're going to go in to look a little bit about what the new group looks like. This is a truly transformative acquisition and therefore I think it's very important that we take most of the time in that space to talk about how do we see these groups together. With me today we're also going to have a look at the team from Daybreak to say hello and then we're also going to answer some of the most common questions that we've gotten from investors sending things in. I also want to answer to gamers out there if you are listening in. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about any announcements or anything about the games. Uh, that will happen in the future together when we've sat down all in the team. But of course we have a lot of plans for the future that we're going to be excited to talk about with you as soon as we have it. EG7 as a company is really an ecosystem for video games companies. We focus on building a platform for video games companies to then work together to become a bigger and stronger whole. We apply a build and buy strategy and this is really that we add on new companies and then focus very actively on how we can help these companies improve in different ways. We have our service segment that has Petrol, world leading marketing agency, sold out, a great UK publisher known for many of their games worldwide and for this great physical reach with 74 different countries. And our developer network that we can apply to port games to different platform or just service games content pipelines, which is going to be really good for this acquisition as we believe that the content cadence is going to be key into driving further revenue growth. Last week, we also added Piranha Games into the company and this is another acquisition that we're extremely excited about. And this is going to fit really well together with Daybreak as there are so many synergies between things like MechWarrior Online and the big online communities that already span the games over at Daybreak. So if you look at the group analyzed on a performer basis, this is of course including if Big Blue Bubble and Piranha would have been part of the group going back four quarters, we would have made 876 million. Swedish crowns and revenue until uh, this quarter. We're super excited about the growth both on an organic and an inorganic level and the possibilities that this brings to the group and this strategy and we think that this is proven to be extremely successful and going to be very successful going forward. Today the group is divided into two segments. We have our service side that is uh, the side where we service different things in the industry with marketing, publishing services or development services. It's very diversified and very stable revenue, but lower margin than our games and IP business that now has been becoming bigger and bigger and now is going to be a majority part of all of our revenue. This has always been our strategy as the service side is there for several reasons. One is our platform that I talked about to help companies scale, but also for the information that it gives us in the market space. Much more is happening around in the companies flow to the games that we're producing and that gives us a lot of intel and what's going on in the market and that's great. But then of course the games and IP is the focus and that's what we said to investors and we're very happy to see that that's exactly what's been happening. We can see major growth. And then we still have several games that we've been investing in that's coming out 21 and 22 that's not including in this revenue numbers. So that's going to be even more exciting. We think that the value chain to have control over that is super important. And 
with this acquisition, we're going to be even more so as Daybreak have their own platform to be able to also work outside of Steam on PC, which of course is great for revenue and great for uh, building communities and being able to cross market for communities to different games. And this, together with our already existing platform, we think is going to create an even better incentive for uh, different developers to want to join us. And this has always been part of our goal and journey. The track record of the company, and this is excluding uh, Daybreak, of course, uh, has a great amount of titles that have already been released. But now also 25 plus titles still excluding Daybreak that's coming out next year so for, and the year after. For me, this is super exciting. I think that this is going to drive significant growth going forward. And I hope that all investors are as excited as I am. Some of them are IP that we acquired. IGI 83 and so on, and some of them are origin, original IP, like Evil vs. Evil or Minimal Effect. And some of them is second party titles that go through uh, companies like Sold Out. All of them very exciting titles coming out very soon. So let's get into Daybreak. Formerly known as Sony Online Entertainment, Daybreak is of course a very iconic company in this industry. Today, uh, Jason Epstein, G. Ham, and Jack Emmert is leading the management team of the company, and Jason and G. are the largest owners to date. The company, uh, until Q3, generated $71 million in revenue and $26 million in EBTA. We think that this is truly a great acquisition for us, as it adds not only uh, double the revenue to the group, but also uh, significantly improves our EBTA by 163% and also, of course, the manpower. To not speak of the IPs as well would, of course, be a fault of me as a CEO as those are some of the greatest IPs, both from third parties and first parties uh, in the industry. Games like EverQuest, Planetside and, of course, H1C1 are amazing IPs that have shown their value to gamers all around the world. And personally, I grew up playing EverQuest. I played Planetside in many of these games, uh, and I am super excited about what's possible for these games going into the future. And then, of course, we also have to talk about some of the third-party IPs uh, uh, for the company. And 2016, some extra uh, IPs was added into the group uh, with the addition of Turbine Studios. These were Dungeons and Dragons Online and Lord of the Rings Online. And with this, the company has a huge portfolio of MMOs that really is operating constantly and generating cash flows for the business. And we think that this creates a very, a very interesting acquisition for us going forward, both for the long history, the IPs, first party and third party, and also for all of the different reasons mentioned above. If we look a little bit closer, we can see that DC Online, Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons are truly some of the larger IPs in the world. And we, of course, see the possibility of growing these games and their communities going into the future as an extremely exciting proposition. But not only that, like I said, EverQuest, H1C1 and Planetside 2 are also amazing brands. EverQuest, who to date has generated $1 billion of sales, is a game that fundamentally changed this industry when it came out. And there's so many players who love the game today and are still playing it. And we think that that shows how important this IP is, and this is something that we truly are going to take care of. H1C1 is a game that did amazing during its time, 40 million downloads, uh, but is today not operated anymore as the focus is on the live service games of the MMOs. But who knows in the future, there's of course a lot of exciting possibilities with this IP, as there are so many gamers out there who truly loves it. Planetside 2 was a unique experience as an MMO shooter when it launched and still to this day has so many players who keep playing it because there's no other product like it in the market who can feature over a thousand players in one game as a shooter. 
when we look a little bit at the numbers, we can see that a huge portion of the revenue coming in for these games are coming from subscription. In something like EverQuest, it's 66,000 users out of the 82,000 monthly active users that are generating revenue through the fact that they are paying on a monthly basis. Many of these games also show that there's a significant diversification in revenue in these titles. And this we think is very important to the future of the company and the stability of the company. On this slide, we can see a little bit of how that diversification looks. To mention here also, we can see that something like EverQuest and EverQuest 2 has quite a significant portion compared to their revenue size in uh, the profit. And this is due to the fact that it, it doesn't exist on a, a PlayStation and mostly uh, getting sold through their own platform, which has a benefit. Uh, while something like DC Universe, of course, has a, a license fee and also exists on PlayStation, a platform that takes their fee. But as a total whole, we think that this shows a very strong core uh, where the revenue is generated. These are long-term revenues and all of these game has for the last few years since uh, the Daybreak guys uh, changed the name to Daybreak, took over the company, has been growing in all of these games. And we think that that growth is what's key about this acquisition and the possibility of further increasing that growth. Something else that's very unique to the gamers out there is how dedicated they are around these games. We believe that these are truly lifestyle games, uh, as we can see that every session, on average, as someone plays a game from Daybreak, they spend five hours in the game. And a session is basically someone sitting down to play at one point in time. This happens, of course, several times a week. Uh, and this uh, truly shows the passion that exists around these games. And we think that there's no reason why we shouldn't push further into this and just engage with the consumers. Uh, super excitement over the, all of these games. And we think that there's a lot of possibilities to further increase the growth of these games and make the gamers even more excited about the possibilities. I think also what can be mentioned here is that this has very high interest in payments into this game from consumers. And I believe that that's also tied to their uh, very high fandom towards this game. Uh, and it's also very spread out over all consumer bases. So it's not any single whale that does the major payments. It is very high payment per uh, average user. Something else that is very important uh, when we look at this, this company and also see the future possibilities is how strong uh, these gamers keep on coming back into this game. This is the revenue based on how long the players have been playing. As you can see, the red bar, so for every game, the red, most of the revenue is coming, 65% or more, is coming from players who played more than three years. But that's not it. There's also a lot of new things to do into the future. One of the things that we're planning out in the future is, of course, to do great updates to the game general big updates, both from a visual and, and other perspective, to give gamers more excitement to come back and play more and things they haven't played before. And also, of course, an unannounced project coming out in the future. If we look a little bit around the financials, I just want to state a few comments. Most of it is already stated in the slide that exists on the investor page. The reason for the dip in revenue and profits during 2019 is related to the content cadence and the content delivery into the game. There was a shift at Daybreak. Uh, during 2018, they decided to be able to update at a much higher pace. And this was impl implemented during 2019 and executed during 2020. Even though we who have looked through all the data during our due diligence can see that, of course, there's a small increase due to uh, COVID-19. The major increase is really seen every time there is content releases. And that this, the fact that there have been an increase in content at a high scale during 2020 has really improved the, the core metrics of these games and the amount of players. And I think that this can really be proven for the, if we look at something like Planetside 2, who started this progression in, in January, February, and already reached 100% growth in revenue before the, the pandemic even started. So 
in our view, we believe that this is really great and this is something that we see as a great thing for the future to focus on more content, more updates for consumers, uh, because that seems to drive their will to play the game. And I think that that's to any gamer is quite obvious. Uh, but what has been the change is the ability to release faster. And I think that's going to be very great going forward for the company. Now, of course, also adding the fact that our group has all of these extra resources that can further grow this game and help these games grow, we think is truly uh, great. I think uh, if you've seen through these slides and maybe read a little bit, you should at this point understand both my excitement for and why the rationale of this acquisition. As a gamer, as a CEO, and to date as the largest shareholder of EG7, I'm super excited as all three. As a gamer, I'm over the moon of all the possibilities of these games. These are great games, games that I've loved through since I was a kid. As a CEO, this makes us a stronger group able to deliver even better content and things for the gamers which I think is super important to what we do, at the heart of what we do. Our organization is going to be stronger. The IPs we can work with is stronger. The possibilities are stronger. As a shareholder, I'm super excited because this is going to drive a lot of shareholder value. And I think that's very, very clear from this transaction. We double revenue and we more than double our profit. Together, we are stronger, and this is something we always talk to our shareholders about. From two groups with relatively similar size, we're now double that size, and it gives us a lot of opportunities. We become more of a key player in this industry, and our ability to service the games, the gamers, our ability to deliver on all the promises that we want to, is just gotten higher. Our ability to maneuver and do the right thing has gotten higher. We have a stronger workforce, we have more ability to market and publish the games in the right way, and we have more experience within the team. Video games is a truly global business, and we have always strived to be very global. Today, we now have a really strong team to help us lead our efforts of M&A in North America. G and Jason has a strong background in M&A and both in the video game space and before that. And we believe that they're truly going to be a great partner. And this is always one of the most important things that we look at when we try to find someone to work together with is what kind of partnership it is going to be. Is this someone that truly believes in our journey? We know that they had many other opportunities to sell and probably at a higher price than we paid for them. But in the end of the day, they believe the stock would worth what it's going to be worth in the future based on their hard work and that they're going to be part of the group. And that's something we loved about this partnership. If we look a little bit quickly at Performa numbers, this is all assuming Big Blue Bubble, Daybreak and of course Piranha would have been part of the group since January to September. So three quarters we would have done 1.3 billion SEC in revenue and 411 million SEC in EBITDA. As you can see, this is a completely different group than we were yesterday. And we think that that is amazing and super exciting. To finish up, this has truly been an amazing day that we've come to this point. We have all of these great gaming companies and now something such as iconic as formerly Sony Online and Daybreak joining us, but also the management team that truly was able to turn around Daybreak from the time when it was managed before to where it is today and managing that growth of the company in an excellent way, adding companies like Turbine uh, and managing those games that we can see in the, that are generating all of the revenue and profits today. And this is excluding any possibilities of new launches and of course major updates. There's also very little capitalization that you see in the DBTA as very close to the cash flow. So this is not uh, that, that you, what you see is very highly capitalized. It's about $2 million. And this is very much close to the cash flows, basically, in the EBTA. So strong cash flows, strong IPs, both third and first party, a really strong management team, and a very bright future for the group and what we're going to do. 
With this, I would like to give over to Jason and team to present themselves, and then I'm going to ask answer a few questions that have been sent out prior to this. Hi, thank you, Robin. Um, I just want to take just a brief moment to introduce myself. I'm Jason Epstein. I'm the executive chairman of Daybreak, a majority shareholder. I live in New York City with my family. I have a long history in private equity and specifically in gaming. And on behalf of the Daybreak team, we're elated to be joining the EG7 family and couldn't be more excited about together as a global team, creating long-term value for all shareholders. Robin, thank you. G. Hey guys, uh, my name is G. I'm the CEO of Daybreak. Uh, based in San Diego, California, which is where Daybreak is headquartered. Very excited to be joining forces with Robin and the entire EG7 family. Uh, we can't wait to bring more great products and games to our fans worldwide. Jack? Thanks, G. I'm Jack Emmert. I'm a longtime passionate gamer. Uh, I started in the industry 20 years ago, co-founding Cryptic Studios. Previous to that, I was studying Greek and Latin at The Ohio State University. Currently, I oversee our game development studios in Austin, that's Dimensional Inc., uh, in Boston, and that is Standing Stone Games. And I, too, am absolutely thrilled to be able to work uh, with a group like EG7. Uh, they're gamers after my own heart. Robin? Thank you very much. Uh, so I have a few questions here, and uh, after that, we're going to wrap up. But uh, if you have questions, and this is something, there's a lot of people reaching out to me now uh, on my email and calling me on the phone, uh, and uh, that's great, but I would really recommend that you send your questions to ir at enatglobal7.com, basically our email, uh, and this is a great place to ask questions so we can gather all these questions together and answer all investors at the same time, as we're very, very careful about not spreading any information to single investors, but really try to do it in as organized form as possible. Uh, then also to gamers out there, I'm still not going to talk any about it. I know you're very excited. I'm also very excited. But I'm not going to talk about the games today uh, and what our plans for the future are, but we will. And uh, stay tuned if you are a gamer and if you are excited about what's going to happen with all of the games together, because we will talk more about it. Uh, so. Uh, but not today and not during our um, company presentations in the financials. So uh, something that I, I was asked about, you know, and I think hopefully I've talked about all of the great benefits of this deal, but something I also wanted to, to take a moment to say uh, during this deal, I mean, for me, this is an amazing opportunity because there's so much cool things to work on together with this, this team, amazing team on what they've delivered so far. Uh, together with us and our platform and all of the things we have. But I also wanted to take a chance to thank all the, all the strong institutional investors and all of the investors out there that has backed us uh, in the race for 1.7 billion sec uh, to do this acquisition. Uh, it is amazing to see all the support uh, and uh, that's just you know, very heartwarming to be honest. Uh, then uh, something that I know a lot of people have also asked about in the investment com community is the H1C1. Uh, when it comes to H1C1, some of you might have seen that there's some restructuring that happened around that game. The reason for that is very simple. The game did really amazingly well, generated $200 million in revenue and a huge amount of profits, but then it didn't generate revenue anymore. And that required some restructuring of the teams so that the company could remain profitable. This was done in the right way, I think, from the team at Daybreak, and it was very important for the future success as the core MMOs was always profitable and growing underneath. Uh, and I think that any investor should understand these kind of actions if they're required. And I, I, some of you might say, uh, you know, why did you do it this way? I would say that this proves how strong a management team we have in Jason and G when you make the hard decision that needs to be made at the right time to remain profitable and remain afloat as a company and continue growing. Because then you can always look back at something like H1C1 and now we have the ability to do things with it in the future, which of course is a great possibility when you own an IP like this, so many gamers are excited about. Something so some other people have asked about is also how is the corporation going to work? How are you integrating? We always integrate finance and of course for regulatory reasons. 
but generally we have a very uh, off-hands approach, but we're very active in working with the teams in different ways how we can support them. Uh, so this means that it will be operated internally the way it is today. But Jason will join the board of EG7. And of course, both Jason and G will join our executive committee, that is the management team, uh, as they work together over the strategy on a group level. And this is everything from our M&A to, of course, what we do within the company. And I think this combination is going to be great. Me as a, you know, a gamer since six years old, uh, and then with their experience and just like uh, all of the experiences, like Jack's gamer experience, I think creates a really good mix for what we can do both from a gamer perspective to a financial perspective to make this, game, get this company super successful. And of course, from a, an inorganic perspective, as we add more companies to the group. We've always stated that one of our goal is to really be the heart of gaming. Uh, we want to be, make sure that the developers that join this group truly feel that we take care of the games and the community that comes into the, the group. And this is something that we really take care to do. And that, of course, includes all of those who work at the companies. Uh, our philosophy is not to come in and cut workforces aggressively. It is to focus on future growth. Uh, another question regarding, you know, how do you see the synergies working? Is, is, is there going to be good ways to work together? And I think that there's an amazing amount of these synergies that's going to come together. Uh, you know, not only do we feel that there's a lot of opportunities to further grow these games with the workforce that we have, uh, of course, with the technology that we have proprietary in, in our house, but also, of course, in the Daybreak, they have the platform that is proprietary and all of these great games and IPs. But then also something like petrol. I mean, this is the perfect thing for something like petrol to dig into. And they're super excited about uh, helping to grow these IPs uh, in the marketing sense. And sold out, of course, on their side with all of the possibilities, what you could do with this in the terms of publishing. Another question that's been asked by a lot of people is, are they going to come up? Uh, more acquisitions and uh, I usually uh, would like to say December is not over yet <laughs> but uh, to be honest uh, what we're going to do is what we've always said uh, we do acquisitions when we have found the right companies to work with the right timing and work to together with them to find the moment in time where it's going to happen we're not stressing about it in a way where we have to do a certain amount of acquisition it needs to be the right ones and in this case it happens to be two ones very close together it might still keep that pace in the future if we keep uh, having these uh, great uh, companies that are joining. We have a huge pipeline and many companies we're talking to, so that's of course very possible and you should expect that we do more M&A in the future. With that, I just want to say thank you to the Daybreak team uh, and a big warm welcome to everyone at Daybreak as you join the company and a big thank you to all investors and everyone who's been listening. Thank you.